first thing, DVD update June 27th is going to be one of the biggest updates to DVD, DVD probably ever. Like in one, in one actual update. And this is everything right here. On the website overhaul progression system matchmaking incentives i'm really excited for that gameplay updates another big thing meta perk changes which and then the non-meta perk changes so for these two meta perk changes basically they're getting nerfed so to speak and then the non-meta perks are getting buffed so it's kind of like somewhat balanced but there's still so many perks that they can change regardless in my opinion because most survivors and killers are running the same fucking 20 perks let's let let's just be honest here so Anyway, let's keep going down uh, the progression system. So now you must reach level 40 as of now in a given character to unlock all the teachable perks and find the perks in the blood web for every character. So now they're changing it to where the grind is less. So in the second paragraph here, instead of, I guess they, they this is their numbers. So the average is 4.1 hours every day. It's going to be like an hour, I guess, which... I guess it's a grind. I play DVD enough where I guess I haven't really noticed it as much, but that's that's probably accurate. It does take time, you know, to do so. But I play. I feel like I played it smartly by saving all my cakes to do it, so I can get to a million. What I do is I usually play unless I want something specifically. I play two million blood points, spend it all, and do it all over again, so I can get it all in one go. It's kind of easier in that sense. But now I'm glad that. This is going to be net. Why? As soon as I go live, my phone decides to go off like crazy. But it wasn't going off like at all. So anyways, let's see. Unlocking perks. Um, So the teachable rarity is no more. Now perks are tied and directly to prestige. Prestiging a character for the first time will instantly unlock the tier one versions of their unique perks for all other killers or survivors, making them immediately, immediately available to use without ever opening the blood web which is pretty nice i like that so the grind is well, just this one thing alone the grind is no more but the thing about this is too is that there's no option to prestige they make you prestige i never prestiged before and i bet i wasn't the only survivor like only player to not prestige at all i just didn't see the point it's you just you lose everything and you get like a cool skin with blood on it i mean it wasn't a lot Let, let's just be honest here it wasn't that great so prestiging has always been a bit of a dilemma do you give up everything for bragging rights which what bragging rights or do you keep everything to wait to mac to minimize the grind which you know there's no bragging rights it, it, it's it's all for clout it sucks it's stupid that's why i've never done it i've upgraded all my characters to who i have unlocked almost level 50 and i just keep playing them and keep doing the blood web and play the game like that's it and then a lot of perks um what else i'm just doing like bullet points um okay so right here after reaching level 50, you receive a special blood web with only a single node. Purchasing this node will increase your prestige level and reset the character to level 1. But you don't lose anything really. Which it says right here in bold, which I'm skipping, but whatever. Prestiging a character will no longer remove the perks, items, add-ons, or offerings. Perk slots will also remain unlocked after prestiging. So, I mean... I feel like you should lose something now. I mean, what, what do you lose now? I guess really nothing or whatever. Um, let's see. Okay, so with Prestige now being the main way to progress, it'll no longer be as impressive to have your characters maxed out at a Prestige level 3. It only made sense to have a new way to recognize the most committed players. So we've increased the Prestige limit to 100, which people are kind of, most survivors or killers are going to blast through that. I'm pretty sure. But uh but what would more prestige levels be without rewards this is this is true reaching prestige levels four five and six will now award that the character's bloody prestige cosmetics once again significant significant damn i can't say the word i know the word but i can't say it those who went above and beyond now that prestiging for the first three time awards perks it only made sense to move these higher if you've already unlocked these cos cosmetics, don't worry. They won't be taking away from you. You've earned it, obviously. Because it was harder to, you know, it was harder to get, in a sense, because you lost everything to get that skin. Which, the skin isn't all that. I think they should give you better skins besides the bloody one. It's like, 
it looks like okay like it's cool i guess but it's that's not to, to be like oh my god look at that skin you know what i mean the skins that you spend money on that are like you know they actually spend real money on are actually better like they're, they're you know they're decent they're cool shadow secrets is changing um what else is important this is important but it's not as important the matchmaking incentives this is going to be so basically the easiest way to say this i say from the games that i've played specifically overwatch has this down to a t so if you ever played overwatch you go into a game you can play three different um uh classes you got tank support and damage so damage is always a high q time stuff like that because everybody loves to play damage so basically what they do is they give you an incentive to play killer i mean to play killer to play uh, tank or support, and it gives you which one they need more of. So same thing with DVD. Do they need more killers? Do they need more survivors? So you, there'll be like a blood points, stuff like that to play that. So let's say you go in into the lobby, right? You go right in. The first thing you're going to see, oh, they need killers right now. Oh, so I get extra blood points. Cool. Great incentives to play. You know, stuff like it's, I wish they would give like crates or cosmetics too. That would be nice. But it seems like it's only, you know, the if you see right here, the bonus ranges from 25 200 depending on the demand levels so if you need to be a survivor and this the best thing about this is not just the incentives to play but it also uh q times will be cut down uh significantly because you know you might be like yeah you know i'll play some killer oh but there's extra blood points for survivor you know what, fuck it i'll play survivor and then vice versa so i mean there's only two roles to play in this game so i mean you know it's not like overwatch we got three which is a little different but the same premise you know applies to this so which is this this is this is amazing this is probably one of me one of the best quality of life improvements to dbd because sometimes i look as a killer and i'm like it'd be literally like five to ten minutes like in real time and i'm still loading i'm still trying to find it i'm like huh and same thing as survivor so i would argue this would be i thought it was because of the rank system of like obviously you don't want to be a good killer with you know new survivors and vice versa with amazing survivors and you know what i mean so i mean that's what I thought it was initially, but this could be part of the problem as well. So this is amazing. Gameplay updates. This is, uh, like, I don't think this specifically is saying it. Um, okay, it's talking about the perks, stuff like that. I'm not skip that for now, because that's in the bottom. That's in the bottom of this, because this, this, this right here is in order of this. So, um, okay, so generators are now going to be... So the main thing that killers run is generator is generator regression. So they want to slow down the game as much as possible. So obviously, you know, Hex Ruin, Scourge, Hook, Pain Resonance, Pop Goes a Weasel, and then a Corrupt Intervention. So basically anything that slows down the game is what's really being used as killers right now. Besides, you know, and Barbecue and Chili, of course. But, so they want to nerf the slowdowns as much. Which, you know makes sense but now generator speed is now from 80 seconds to 90 seconds so i mean it's it's kind of like the ratios are different but i think it's going to be interesting and then for a killer uh right here if you see a second kicking a generator now easily remove 2.5 percent of the maximum progress so whatever it's at at 50 percent it's going to lose 2.5 it's at 30 2.5 no matter what it is it's going to lose that 2.5 um Okay, I think this says... Okay, so this change makes kicking generators more meaningful, even if a survivor stops it from regressing shortly after. This this is actually really true. You can out... do the generator. The killer can keep kicking it and kicking it and kicking it. It just makes it... I don't know what the numbers were, but it just makes it digress, but it doesn't lose a certain amount. It just stops it where it's at. So let's say it's at 50%. It'll stop it and it'll slowly, slowly regress. I don't know what the number was specifically of what it was but obviously it can keep digressing if a, if a survivor doesn't press it but now if a survivor presses it it'll be 2.5 2.5 2.5 2.5 2.5 doesn't stack but it'll it, so that that's fair i think that's pretty fair i'm not gonna lie for 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 being a killer because i play you know killer 2 i play survivor much more but this is really fair so um let's see this is the general improvements um this is actually a lot a lot here so i think we need to go over this um so let's see the average kill rates how many survivors are killed in each trial on average are a little lower than we'd like so this is going to be this is going to be a real a real uh killer season so to ensure the killer feels like 
and unstoppable force to be feared, we're making slight improvements to many aspects of the killer gameplay. Alright, so let's go through this. We've reduced the time it takes to break walls and pallets by 10%. Now, it was, so as of now, it's at 2.34 seconds. That's a weird number. Also, now it's going to be 2.34 seconds. Previously at 2.6. Generators can be kicked 10% faster than before. So I wonder if that will stack with, um, what's that perk? Brutal Strength. I wonder if that will stack. I think it's, what is it, 20% if I'm not mistaken? So does that mean it'll be 30? Or is this void altogether? I don't know. Um, what else? So now 8.1 seconds was now 2 seconds. While these changes seem small, a fraction of a second can make a difference between hitting the survivor and the reaching pallet. No, that, that makes a big difference. I think a lot of people underestimate um, seconds within this game. It, like, it makes a huge, huge difference. Now this is pretty big. Now we've reduced the cooldown for successful basic attacks by 10%. So now 2.7 seconds, previously 3 seconds. That's pretty significant, uh, significant. but what about the perk, um, what is it? I think it's Mad Grit, but I think that's only when you're holding your survivor, if I'm not mistaken, or is that another, I think there's another perk where if you miss a basic attack, you can recover 30% fast, faster as well. I think that's a different perk, and I can't think of the name, if you know what it is, put it in the comments. Anyways. Uh, so moving forward, survivors will gain slightly less distance upon being hit, making it more difficult for them to run a long distance to a safe area. So, I mean, I wonder, because it's kind of underrated right now, but what what's the perk? Um, Overcome, that came recently in the game. It gives you an extra two seconds. I wonder if that'll be more meta now because of this. But even then, it's, it's only 0.2 of a second. I think we're going to feel it. I think between the killer recovering faster and the way you're running i think you're going to feel it a little bit more but i think that's when you would feel it in my opinion so all right so bloodlust is uh ooh, this is a good one finally we take bloodlust to increase the power quicker than before in most in most chases bloodlust does not activate which is true do there are rare cases where it can be necessary the long build up often leaves the killer in a bad soft spot even they eventually get the hit. We are adjusting bloodlust tiers to activate after 15, 25, 35 seconds after chasing rather than 15, 30, 45 seconds. So it's still the first 15 seconds, but I think a lot of killers don't understand. And this is how I play as a killer. So this one I'm not too crazy about, but I, if you can't hit or knock a survivor within the first 10, 15 seconds, go do something else so you can catch them off guard. I think I found that being a lot. Just a little side tip. But anyways, I think I found that to be a little better. So now let's go to camping and tunneling. On the survivor side, there's a clear preference for perks that grant second chance. Borrow time, decide to strike, dead heart. These perks of that natural help a survivor avoid certain death leading to an extreme usage rate. Which is true. And it's and it's not even that specifically. Is that these, these three perks specifically and the other 15... That we use are just more consistent adrenaline sprint burst iron will they're just most they're just most really consistent most uh, most other perks in the game even for killer as well are more situational like yeah it might happen but it's not going to happen every game and i think that's the issue with these perks specifically so a benefit i mean just highlight it so it's easier to see a benefit these second chance perks is how that they help prevent unfun situations mainly being camped or tunneled out of the game repeatedly being targeted after being unhooked which we all know that okay and what what the hell in order to incentivize incentivize a meaningful change to the meta it was clear that we needed to address these controversial tactics second chance perks should be nice to have not essential to ensuring enjoyable gameplay which is fair that's also true moving forward survivors will receive a five second endurance effect after being unhooked now that's without borrowed time this gives a hook survivor an opportunity to reach a nearby window or pallet or another survivor to position themselves for a protection hit. So basically, everyone's going to have borrow time, but it's nerfed to 5 seconds, which 5 seconds is pretty good. That's enough to wear. But the thing is about this, I don't know 
I'm trying to think of like in my mind for like survivor mains, even as myself. I mean, I'm a, more a survivor main than a killer main. But now you know every survivor is going to have bar time. So do you go for the hit? Or do you think they should go for the survivor who got the outhook? So it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Additionally, a unhooked survivor will receive a 7% haste effect for 5 seconds. This will make them harder to catch and encourage killers to shift focus to the unhooking survivor, which I guess ideally that's fair, but then I feel like there's going to be more, even though it's kind of happening now, it's going to be like a trade-off. Okay, so let's say I'm injured and I, you know, I take the guy off the hook. He has 5 seconds. The killer obviously knows that. He's just going to hook him. And then, and then, so unless you're, you're healthy, then you, it won't really be a trade, but you know, it's it's interesting. It's interesting to see how it's gonna play out. Okay, uh, let's see. Bonus effects will be canceled prematurely if the unhooked survivor performs what we now call a conspicuous action. These are interactions other than being chased that would improve your chance of survival. This includes repairing a generator, healing yourself or others, cleansing a blessing and totem, sabotaging a hook, unhooking survivors, unhooking survivors, unhooking others, which survivors. Opening and, and opening and exit gate. God, I can't talk today. But this 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 makes sense. So basically, if you're not being actually tunneled, like he's not actively chasing you, you're not gonna be able to do those actions anyways. So I would say that that's that's fair. That's fair. Now these are all the perk changes basically. So this this is just describing all the perks being used. Da 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 da. And then, but it's just easier to just go. Obviously, we know what perks are being used. If you're playing the game for the last six months to a year, you already know what perks are being used by killers and by survivors. So that's basically what it's explaining. So barbecue and chili, the only thing that they're getting rid of is the blood point bonus. That's it. But barbecue and chili is always used, and I think there should just be a cooldown. I mean, I guess that's fair. So I'm still killers. I'm I'm sure killer mains are gonna are gonna use this perk, regardless. I'm 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 pretty confident. I'm pretty confident. So anyways, uh, Ruin, this was actually a really good one. So I think it was, so 50, 75, 100, from 100 to 150 to 200. So to, so to bring Hex Ruin in line with other perks, we're reducing their regression speed to 50. So at level 1 is 50, level 2 is 75, and level 100, I mean level 100, level 3 is 100. So now it's not 200%. So 100% is fair. I mean, I think that, because Hex Ruin is pretty strong. Even with it being 50, 75, 100, it's still pretty good. Especially at level at level 3. It, that's good. 200% was definitely, you know, over the top. So Pop is getting changed. So current effect, after hooking a survivor, the next generator you kick within the time limit instantly loses 25% of his progress. Which is crazy. So if you're doing that gen, you're 20% done. Pop kicks, it's at, it's at 0. It's at almost all, you know, it's at, you know what I mean, 50, it's at 25. It's pretty significantly. It's pretty, that's a good, that's a lot. 25 is a lot for any gen. So imagine combining this with, with Ruin. Like, this is what killers were, 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 were running. So it's, it's insane. It's insane. All right. Um, so let's see. So what, so what's it down to now? Given that kicking a generator now removes 2.5% of the progress by default, we decided to tone down some numbers to compensate. This perk will now remove 20% of the generator's current, not total, progress. So whatever the gen is at, it will lose 20% of it, not just 25. So comparing, so right now, before this update, if you have if you're 50% on the generator, and pop goes off, you lose 25% of it. So it would go down 25. But now it's going to lose 20% of 50. So it's a lot less, which is still good. 20% is still pretty good. I just think they're being toned down. You know, so it's still going to be viable. Corrupt intervention. Okay, I say the current effect. At the start of the match, the three furthest generators are blocked for a while. Which is, why are they, why are they wording it like that? It's like two, no, is it two minutes? 120 seconds, I believe it is. Which is, yeah, two minutes. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure right now it's two minutes. So now, this perks makes the beginning of the match more manageable, forcing survivors to extend deeper into the map before repairing a generator. We aren't looking to change that aspect. That's fair. 
I think that that's that's actually true because there will be times. Let's say uh, one killer spawns on this side, you spawn on this side. You're gonna do the gens on this side first. Now you don't want to go crazy with it because you don't want to be three gen. But yeah, ideally that does happen. So th this work, even though it's annoying, I'm not gonna like, but it I, it's more annoying because every killer runs it. That's really more why it's annoying. In my opinion. Anyways, moving forward, this purple deactivate once the survivor enters a dying state. Which is... That's amazing. We believe this change will keep the current intervention effective in helping the killer build early game pressure while providing a limit to its power. This this is, like, perfect. Like, absolutely perfect for this perk. So now, like, Trapper... Trapper, killers like Trapper, uh, Hag can, like, set up traps and stuff like that. So this, this would be... This would be good. A lot of killers are still going to run this regardless, but I think they're just going to be more careful of who they down. I think that might, maybe might change it. So like you find a, you find a survivor, you just hit him and maybe go for another, maybe to have him just injured. Maybe so, so you don't lose, you know, this perk because a lot of killers are going to lose it quicker than expected. So, but it's fair. Okay, so Tinkerer, current effect when a generator reaches seventy percent progress, receive a loud noise notification, become undetectable for a short duration. So now they're nerfing this. Tinkerer is a popular choice for the information it provides, which is true. Being able to prevent the generator from being powered is a game changer, particularly on killers with high mobility. It can, however, become a little oppressive when paired with certain regression perks. Yeah, no shit. Therefore, Tinkerer can only can only activate once per generator but but with the base changes increased to, to 90 kills have an extra time to approach this is fair so now so um the best example is um uh what's her name the ring killer the oreo whatever her name is um her perk her perk uh merciless storm when it hits 90 when that gen hits 90 percent you get all those skill checks right but you only get it once so let's say it hits 90 you miss it it gets blocked for, what, 20 seconds, I believe? You can't get Merciless Storm again once you hit 90. So once it hits 90, and let's say it hits 90, and then you get all of it, and then somehow you lose it, whatever. It, you, it only happens once per generator, that's it. So once it hits 90, Merciless Storm, it can't get it again. But with Tinker, you can keep getting it per generator every time. So this is actually a fair buff. It's just like, Tinker is the only little perk that can do that. So this is more than fair let's just be honest no one no one escapes death thank god or no ed for short but thank thank god they fuck so everyone knows what no does if let's live under rock and he'll play this game so anyways this perks is a more effective comeback tool though it falls out of favor in high school games we like the way no one encouraged survivors to preemptively cleanse totems so we are not looking to weaken its direct strength instead survivors will now see the hex totems aura within four meters upon activation this range increases 24 meters over the course of 30 seconds <clears throat> excuse me this is amazing this is this is amazing you know and there's still so many perks i have to go through it's gonna be like the longest video of all time anyways okay upon hooking upon hooking a survivor on a scourge Cook the generator with most progress explodes, notifying the killer instantly loses the lar lose a large chunk of the progress. I don't even know what the numbers were, but they but you do. And it keeps regressing after that as well. The most recent addition to the meta, Pain uh, Renaissance 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 bleh, allows the killer to remove a sizable chunk from the most progressive generator simply by hooking a survivor. A loud noise notification will also allows the killer to disrupt the survivors before they can continue repairing. A jack of all trades of shorts granting both a powerful regression effect and a crucial information. This is, yeah, facts. With that in mind, we we are removing the loud noise notification. Instead of exploding, the affected generator will now, will now spark upon losing progress and survivors will no longer scream. We believe this will ensure pain renaissance remains the strong pro regression perk while limiting its info informational aspect this is fair i think that's good because it's because it's like two perks in one i think they can literally have another perk that does what they just removed so you know for information dead hard this is this is this is everybody's controversial whatever that hard is annoying as a killer it's it's a lot and for me in my opinion 
I think it's because the cooldown of it was every 40 seconds. It sounds like a long time, but it's pretty fast. It's it's pretty fast. Unless you're on top of that one survivor who is dead hard and you just dead hearted and you're just on him, then you know it's different. But regardless. Okay, so let's see. What's the main thing? There are two main ways that hard is used to dodge a hit for distance to get a nearby pallet or window. In the in the latter case, there's not much a killer can do. Therefore, Dead Hard will now provide an endurance effect for one second when activated. If you time it right, you'll prevent the hit. You will prevent the hit and gain a movement speed boost. This will remove Dead Harding for distance and make it slowly to use to dodge hitch, which killers can anticipate and even bait more. Yeah, that this, this this is fair. I like this. I think this is fair, to be honest. Decisive. Uh, so what's the ch what's the main change? Okay, so the main change is everyone knows what decisive does, but the main changes from here is right here. You can't use it when the exegates are powered, and now the stun is from five seconds to three seconds. I think that that's bullshit because I would argue three seconds is what's it comparable to? Head on. If you use head on and you stun the killer coming out the locker with head on, it's only three seconds. And I've been trying to use head on and it's kinda it kinda sucks. But three seconds is nothing. The five seconds, that extra two seconds is is really where it's at. So I think I don't know. We can see how it's gonna play out. I don't as a killer main, I don't find decisive to be that annoying. It's more annoying because everybody uses it, not the actual effect. Like I can still catch up. Uh, you know, but we'll see how it plays out. Bar time, basically it's just gonna stack on top of the regular time because remember we said that no matter what if i had hook you from the hook you get the five seconds of endurance this is just going to add an extra five seconds to that so six eight and ten is what bar time is going to do so you don't really need a bar time because everyone's going to essentially going to have it this is just going to add extra time to it that's basically it uh iron will now they changed it instead of 100 percent silent it's going to be 75 percent, which is still pretty good but this is, this is a big nerf to Iron Will, which I don't like. Iron Will is no longer active when exhausted, through though it will not cause an exhaustion itself. So basically, if I use Sprint Burst and I'm running around, I get hit, Iron Will will not work because I'm exhausted. Which low-key kind of makes sense. I think the main thing they should do with Iron Will, because let's say I'm healthy, right, and I'm hiding behind a rock. If you listen closely and you're playing with headphones as a killer, you should be able to hear some breathing. And low key, well not low key, I think most people know this, each character breathes differently. Some are louder than others. In in general, some are louder than others. So but with Iron Will, you're completely silent, period. Of even breathing. So you're actually more loud healthy with Iron Will as of now. So you're actually more quiet hurt. Which is interesting. So I think with Iron Will, this is an extreme nerf to it, in my opinion. I think they should have made it where you can still hear breathing while you're hurt. But you're not groaning like, oh, like owning some people are just so obnoxious. You know, so it, I think it was a little much. Self-care is interesting. Uh, this, this is, this is, this is interesting. I think this is a good, fair, uh, fair thing for self-care, in, in, in my opinion. So to reduce his strength, self self care's uh, healing speed will be lowered from twenty five thirty to thirty five percent, and then the item fishing bonus has been removed. Well, this is fine. I don't really self care. I, I'm fifty fifty. I can see why it's good. I can see why it's great, but I don't really care for. It. I don't really use it. And and even as a killer or as a survivor, I don't really see it run that much. I mean, like 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 yes, it's there. I know it exists, and people do use it, but I don't really see it as as a as like a dead hard or a decisive or a bar time or an iron will. So spine chill. Oof, this is this is this is this is another one. Let's see. What is the main thing here? Okay, okay. Th th yeah, this is a, a nerf. And this this one yeah, this one was stupid. When I first heard about this, I was like, what? So spine chill will now only activate if the killer has a clear line of sight of the survivor. What's the point? So if I'm like behind the wall on a gen and he looks at me, it's not going to go off? What? Well, that's the whole point. 
don't know if he was looking at you. I would argue that just a speed bonus should just be off and then keep it where if he's just looking at you within a cone of the distance or a distance, whatever it was, keep that and then get rid of the speed bonus. But they're moving, they nerfed this perk to the ground. That, 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 that's, that's a little ridiculous in my opinion, but whatever. So now these are all the killer perk buffs. So overcharge, wait, overcharge? Isn't this jolt? Along with its current effects, overcharge will cause a kick generator's regression speed to grow from 100 to 400 over the course of 30 seconds. The virus will want to stop this generator from regressing as soon as possible. Isn't it overcharge? What am I thinking? I'm thinking of jolt. Why am I thinking of jolt? Wasn't wasn't jolt called something old before that? Whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, eruption. They're buffing eruption release with fairly safe numbers, but upon re reflection, we're comfortable with increasing them. We have up the generator regression penalty to 10% and the, dura the duration of incapacity's effect for 15, 20, 25. Damn. Damn. Uh, but you know what? It doesn't really go off as much because the, the kill has to make sure he's kicking the gens, which is a good incentive, but 25 seconds to be incapacitated? That's a long time. That's a long time, but we'll see how it plays out. Okay, knockout. Those of you who like to leave survivors on the ground can have a little more peace of mind. Uh, I mean, everyone's just going to want to run Unbreakable, but I mean, I, that's what I run. Anyways, in addition to its current effect, knockout out knockout will cause dying survivors to crawl 50% slower for 15 seconds and reduce the recovery speed by 25%. Um, damn, this basically cancels out tenacity because that's what it gives you 50%. So would you crawl at regular speed? that right i guess this is specify so that's interesting and they reduce the recovery speed by 25 percent. so i mean if you don't have unbreakable or no mither that's gonna be pretty fucking slow but if you have unbreakable what does unbreakable give you 35 percent? i think if i'm not mistaken so it's gonna be you only get a 10 percent boost assuming that's what the numbers are gonna be and everything so chlorophobia chlor chlorophobia am i reading that right i probably am uh, to make healing in the killer's territory is more uh, unappealing chlorophobia chlorophobia will now increase its speed of skill checks by 50 percent the top of its current effect yeah that's fine i guess dark devotion this perk is great for confusing and sneaking up on survivors but the basic attack requirement makes it unappealing for certain killers dark devotion will now activate whenever the, the obsession loses the health state yeah, fair buff so like Legion, you can use it on him, but you'd have to use his basic attack. Yeah, I can use it on his um his frenzy. So yeah, I think that's fine. Uh Jolt, I use Jolt as a kill. I love Jolt. Good perk. Jolt also Jolt allows the killer to regress generous simply by downing a survivor. It's making it more consistent and punish careless survivors' plays. We have removed the cooldown. That's fair. That's fair. I mean what was the, I don't remember what the cooldown was, but I don't feel like it was over the top, but that's probably a fair buff. The Pursuer, I used it. I don't really need it. Uh, so, you like aura reading, huh? Uh, that's funny. On top of existing effect, Lethal Pursuer will now extend the duration of all aura reading effects by two seconds. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So, wh what is it? So, if you're running barbecue and chili, I believe at level three, it's four seconds to see. So I'll give you an extra two seconds. That's pretty cool. That's actually pretty cool. That's actually not bad. I can't think of any other killer effects. Like, what is, what's another one? Like, I'm all ears, I think is another one I could think of top of my head. That's cool. I like that. That's not bad. Uh, let's see. Scourge Hook, Gift of Pain. This perk also shipped with safe numbers. So we'll be increasing the action speed penalty to 10, 13, 16. Okay, whatever. Thanophobia. Also, a quick one, we're increasing the action speed penalty to 4.55 4 for per survivor. The maximum of... What? They're buffing Thanophobia? Fuck that. Yo, Thana's a bitch. If you combine Thana with Ruin, even though Ruin's being nerfed, it's so annoying. Thana's, Thana's a really pow powerful perk, and they're buffing. I'm surprised they're buffing it. That's... Ugh, that's ridiculous. Uh, Monstrous Shine, okay. Long have we waited. Monstrous Shine has received a rework. This 
perk will now convert all basement hooks to scorch hooks. Additionally, scorch hooks will now grant 10, 15, 20% faster entity progression, but only if the killer is not within 24 meters. That's good. I, I think that, that that is a... I mean, I will, at least you're not camping the basement, but you know what? If you get a basement trapper... They're, oh my god, basement trapper is annoying. But the, the, the top two killers who camp are trappers and bubbas. You know, Leatherface, like that. Whatever. Mm, that's gonna be annoying. I think this is gonna be annoying. Uh, oh, look, they're buffing Calm Spirit, finally. In addition, Calm Spirit's effect, current effect, you can now open chest and cleanse, bless, totem silently. A, a bet? A bet? What's that say? I'll, I'll bet. Is that, is that right? A bet? At 40, 35, 30% reduced speed. Okay. Wait, what? Oh, we can do it silently, so there's no, like, sound of the... I guess that's fair. I guess that's fair. Yeah, I mean, whatever. I'm not... I'll see Saboteur, okay. Oh, these are all buffs. I skipped, I skipped this like a moron. Um... Okay, I, but, I mean, I guess that's fair, but that's a lot. But level 30%, I guess that's okay. Anyway, Saboteur, after months of studying, Saboteurs can now identify score hooks. That's cool. Their auras will be shown in yellow when a survivor is being carried. Use this information to your advantage to prevent score hook perks from being active. That's actually really cool. People, the thing about Saboteur, because I used to run it all the time, the thing about it is, I think the only way to make this perk viable is if maybe when a survivor gets down you can see all the hooks for like maybe a, a sec like two seconds maybe and then it goes away and then they, i don't know because because it's if they're too far away you can't get the hook on it's rare and it's harder to get the hook save by unhooking the hook with saboteur it's easier to do it with a toolbox with upgraded like uh tool speeds and stuff like that to make it faster because it's it's or they should make it two seconds Instead of 2.5. It wouldn't be broken. Because you can only use this perk every fucking 60 seconds. Or something like that. So, and it's the chances of you still getting it. Even 1.5 wouldn't be broken. It really wouldn't. So either the... So it's a it's a okay buff. It's a start. But I would argue they're probably going to rebuff this perk. Because that's nothing. Botany Knowledge now increases healing speed by 30, 40, 50%. Up from 11, 22, 33. That's actually really good. That's actually interesting. I wonder if it stacks with like... We'll make it. Or a uh, circle of healing. Uh, so that'd be interesting. It's cool. Um, off the record, this is not going to be broken. I saw another video on YouTube saying this is going to be... What the? I can drag this? What is going on here? Anyways, upon being unhooked, gain the endurance status effect for 60, 70, 80 seconds. The endurance effect is lost upon performing a conspicuous action, which we spoke about earlier. While this is a lengthy endurance effect, any game progression action will cancel it prematurely making it purely for evading the killer after being unhooked uh, that's cool i think that that makes sense i'm not i don't think it'll be broken because it just prevents tunneling tunneling is such a it, I, I don't know about super 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 high levels like in competitive but camping and tunneling is just it, it's ridiculous okay lucky break this perk is great for escaping a chase but the effect runs Quick, I just skipped a word, but the effect quickly runs out. We're giving survivors a way to recharge Lucky Break. Each second spent healing a, another survivor increases Lucky Break duration by one second. The total time cannot exceed the starting duration. That's fair. I think that's a fair buff. Because once you use it, you lose it. And it's like, that's fair. Uh, pharmacy. Pharmacy, you use to guarantee an emergency med kit the first time you search the chest which you'd either hope nobody takes before you need it or hide it in a far off corner like a med kit goblin you know what that's true now pharmacy will activate whenever you're injured guaranteeing an emergency med kit when you search a chest this effect can happen multiple times in one trial good luck stealing my med kit now meg <laughs> that's funny but um no this is good that's fair for i've never ran pharmacies uh, specifically but that's good Soul Survivor, this perk was trash, wasn't it? In addition to hiding your aura, Soul Survivor will now increase your general repair speed by 75% and your exit gate and hatch action speed by 50%. This effect only activate when your last survivor standing. Huh. 
That's actually interesting. I would definitely try this out now. Not bad. Distortion. For those who like to stay hidden, we've added a way to re regain distortion tokens. Gain one token for every 30 seconds spent. Then their kill is terrorized. That's fair. That's good. Because distortion wasn't like some... That's, that's fair. Lightweight. In, addi in addition to Lightweight's existing effects, your scratch marks will be more sporadic. Cool. Making, making you harder to track. Your scratch marks will also fade 5, 4, 3 seconds sooner up to 1, 2, and 3. That's good. That's a fair buff because it wasn't not many people are running this perk anyways, but that's good. Deja vu to help survivors power three closest generators. Deja vu will now grant five percent repair speed bonus to reveal generators. That's good. That's fair. No one left behind beyond its current effects. No, no one left behind will grant a seven percent movement speed bonus to any survivors you unhook. Additionally, the perk now activates when the gate when the gates are powered rather than opened okay makes sense dark sense i've used this a little bit it's actually pretty good we've changed the way dark sense works when a generator is powered dark sense activates and the next time the killer comes with a 24 meters view the aura is revealed for 5 7 10 seconds dark sense then deactivates okay i like that I love using Tenacity. In addition to its current effects, Tenacity now reduces your current pain by 75% when you're dying. Say, combined with the increased crawling speed, this perk will now be much more effective when crawling away from the killer. That's actually nice. Oh, shit. That's actually really, really nice. I love it because my build right now is uh, Tenacity, uh, Boil Over, Unbreakable, and, uh, and, uh, fuck. Power struggle? No, I switched from power struggle, or a, uh, or a fuck. Oh, flip flop, flip flop. Okay. Uh, hope is great for those who like to make late game saves, but the limit duration can cause it to expire in an inconvenient time. Since the perk is only useful at the end of the match, we removed the duration entirely. That's fair because you'll be on the hook. You have hope, but the countdown starts while you're on the hook. I mean, I'm glad you just removed it entirely. But nobody's re really running hope anyways. I barely see this fucking perk. Well, it's not bad. You combine that with like adrenaline or something for that second, you'll be running pretty fucking fast. I'm sure it'll stack. In its current state, cleansing a totem grants you a repair, a repair bleh, grants you a repair speed bonus of six, seven, eight. Now that double now that bonus doubles if you cleanse a hex totem. That's fair. And this perk just came out overzealous. So that's good. We're gonna live forever. Damn, what the fuck? Fuck, they... Okay. Much like barbecue and chili, this perk features a massive blood point bonus. We do not want blood points to dictate which perks are used. So we have removed the bonus blood points. We're going to live forever. That's fair. Because, you know what? I'll go back to it. Before I say because, we'll go back to it later. This change will, will release this at the same time as your progression overhaul, which is expected to cut the grind by 75%, which matchmaking incentives provide an additional avenue for blood points additionally actions that previously granted a token will now activate the perk's secondary effect while active healing a survivor from a dying state grants the endurance effect from six eight ten seconds the secondary effect we're gonna live forever then deactivates okay this is this is this is good okay so let's go back real quick because this right here because everything's i think it's um was it overhauled? It was something with unlocking perks. What was the blood point? There was something with the blood points. No, no, I think I spoke about it already. No, I made a mistake. I spoke about the time it takes. Well, that was their numbers right here. But that was their numbers. Yeah, okay, I already spoke about it. Never mind. Did it all in the video. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much everything. Um, I think this is overall, I think it's going to be really good. Because you got... Meta changes, the perks that are trash are being updated. Overall, this is going to be a really good update. And I'm actually really excited about it. But if you have any questions, comments, let's leave them. And yeah, I def like, that's it. I'm going to leave it at that. All right. Fucking awesome.